it's been a while since I've been deemed necessary, but um, I'm, I'm going to take that as a compliment. Um, I'll only take a few minutes. I, I didn't have the benefit of hearing everything Mr. Tibbetts had to say, but I think I get the gist of it, which is we're still part of this discussion about why we have this ongoing litigation. Um, so I want to come back to that point again. Um, and I'm not going to go through the entire history at the airport. Most people in the room already know it. Um, I just want to point out a couple of things that got us where we are today. The airport authority entered a contract with Silver Comet that Calding County is not a party to. Blake Swalford signed a Part 139 application to bring commercial service to the Paulding County Airport without Paulding County's consent and approval. Resolution 1501 was this board's statement to the FAA that it did not support the commercialization of the airport and that it wanted the Part 139 application to be withdrawn. The next thing that happened is the airport authority sent a letter to the FAA that said, no matter what you hear from Pauline County, we want you to move forward with that Part 139 application. And I will submit to this board that that one moment in time is the reason that I'm here. That one moment in time is why this county and the airport authority have incurred all of the legal expenses that they've incurred. It's because the airport authority says we don't care what Pauline County says, FAA. We want you to move forward with that 139 application. We filed the lawsuit not just to challenge Blake Swafford's authority to sign the Part 139 application. We filed a lawsuit asking the court to determine whether the airport authority could move forward with the commercialization of that airport without this county's consent. Regardless of who signed the application, whether Blake Swafford signed it, Terry Tibbetts signed it, doesn't matter. And we filed it because the airport authority told the FAA, we want you to move forward with your consideration of that application. In other words, we want commercial service brought to that airport. Now, if you think commercial service at that airport is a dead issue, let me just disabuse you of that notion. I was in court Tuesday on appellate arguments in related cases to this lawsuit in which the attorney for Silver Comet stood up and the first words out of his mouth were, we, commercialization of that airport is not a dead issue. We intend to move forward with bringing commercial service to Paulding County. So if, if commercial service is a dead issue, somebody needs to, to tell Silver Comet because they certainly plan on it. Now, the FAA has told us in writing that they consider the Part 139 application to be pending. And it will remain pending until the litigation is resolved. That is the FAA's official position on this as communicated to us. So if we dismiss our lawsuit, asking the court to declare, as between the county and the airport authority, who has the right to move forward with this Part 139 application, if we dismiss that lawsuit, that opens the door for the FAA to move forward with its consideration of the 139 application. And as Silver Comet said a week ago, that's exactly what they want. Now, this letter that Terry mentions that came later on had nothing to do with the 139 application, had nothing to do with the FAA's treating that as an open issue. It was in the context, if you recall, of the demand by the FAA that we come up with a joint corrective action plan. And why did we have to come up with a joint corrective action plan? We had to come up with a joint corrective action plan because the airport authority went to David Austin two days before he left office and had him sign a quick claim deed for 163 acres of airport property. Despite what? Despite the fact that the FAA had said don't do it unless both parties consent to it. But they went ahead and they did it anyway. We don't even learn of that until February when David Austin's deposition is taken in the context of this litigation. 
Learning that, I sent a letter to the airport authorities attorney, and I said that quick claim deed was signed without authorization by Pawnee County, and also signed despite the fact that the FAA had told the airport authority, we, we do not want anything to happen with that airport property without the consent of both parties. I sent the Pawnee County Airport Authority attorney a letter and demanded the return of that deed. What did they do? Not only did they not return it, they went out and recorded the deed. So it was at that point that I had to communicate to the FAA, despite your instructions to everybody to the contrary, the airport authority has gone out, had the outgoing chairman sign this deed, now they've recorded it, and now, according to you, FAA, we're at risk of being in violation of these grant assurances. It was the FAA that then said, you and the airport authority have to cooperate to come up with this joint corrective action plan. We had letters going back and forth to the FAA, at which point the FAA said, we want you both communicating to us jointly about the joint corrective action plan. It had nothing whatsoever to do with the Part 139 application. They only wanted to hear from us jointly in the context of the joint corrective action plan. I say all that to say that as far as I know, sitting here right here today, it is still the FAA's position that that Part 139 application remains pending. And it remains pending until this litigation is resolved. And not a week ago, Silver Comet's attorneys say they intend to move forward with commercial service at that airport and it is not a dead issue. So that's why these lawsuits remain pending is because the airport authority sent that communication to the FAA and said we want you to move forward with the 139 application no matter what position the county takes in all of this and that's how we got here today